Welcome into the Holton Ehlers Show. We got an exciting episode ahead. Hey, MLB starts this weekend. Elite Eight slash Sweet Sixteen ball. UFL starts spring football as well. See you on the other side of the break. Hope you enjoy the show. If not, as always. That's too damn bad. Holton Ehlers turns and Holton will take off and run himself. He's at the forty yard line. Holton Ehlers to the thirty. Look at him go. Twenty. There's local politics, bud. It's showtime! We are back. The Holt Naylor Show. Yes, we were supposed to have Kurt Ben Kurt for the tough, second straight week. Tough subject. The, 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 the guy couldn't make it for the second straight week, so we are without a guest this week. We will continue to try to get the best guest possible. If you have any suggestions, hey, just add us. We're going to try to make it happen. Hey. We were told that he was going to make it last week. We were told he was going to make it this week. We were even told that he's going to make it next week. But we'll see if we uh, if we hold up our bargain on that one. But <laughs> uh, first, just want to say shout out to Southern East. You see me wearing the hat right here, boys. Um, what are you waiting for? Experience the many wellness benefits of Southern East's tasty hemp edibles by going to southernease.com. Hey, and at the end of the show, we're going to give you a little discount code for twenty five percent off your order. Just got to wait till the end of the show, boys. It's March. The madness has happened. How about Oakland? Your boy was just jacking up threes like Jim Jimmer for death uh, over there. Beats Kentucky. Uh, that's one big storyline. NC State still rolling. Got a big game this weekend, obviously. What are our thoughts on early March madness? That uh, that Oakland win for sure helped out NC State. Uh, they were obviously still competitive in the second round right there against Oakland. Um, but I think that for sure helped them out pretty big time. Caden, what, do you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't mean to change the subject. I feel like I'm, you know, Ben Kirk shouldn't show up. I guess I'm here again. So it's been, it's been <laughs> yeah, a while. Yeah, give I'm a give a round of applause for Caden for Caden <laughs> actually showing up to a podcast. Welcome back. There we go. Um, no, I think it's been great. It's been a great March. Uh, I love the state run and conference tournament and the state run here and uh, the round of 64. Now the round of 32. Now the Sweet 16. I'm high on state. I think that big boy's fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, he really is a good time to watch. And I think um, I think they are riding it. Do I think they'll win the Sweet 16 against Marquette? I think it's a better matchup for them than Colorado. Uh, Colorado had that. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. He was also 6'11", kind of built like DJ Burns. Uh, I would say identical body styles. I think DJ Burns is better, but he's fun to watch. And I think down low, State has a better matchup. But yeah. overall... I watched all the games. They were great. I don't know if you guys saw the Creighton Oregon game, double overtime that yeah. same night Ooh. in Pittsburgh. Um, that was a great one. Um, Alabama versus Grand Canyon had me yeah, sweating. I had Grand Canyon. Me too. In man. my bracket, I didn't put money on that one. But you're no. talking about NC State Oakland. That was a great game, dude. That we had great. the spread. I had the yeah. spread at five and a half. They go into overtime. And win by six, boys. I was uh, I was sweating that one. You had yeah. the spread five and a half. I had the spread four and a half. And me, like, oh my god, I was like, when they jacked up that half court shot and it hit the back of the rim, sweaty. I was like, oh my god. But no, it's it's been nothing but great basketball. Um, I think the Oregon Creighton game. I know that one was super late. Ended late. Not many people I talked to actually watched that game. But that was probably if you go back, no one's going back and watching it. But if someone did go back and watch it, and you're a true basketball fan like that. That was probably the most exhilarating game of the night. But what about you guys? Any ones that stuck out to you outside of those ones we just talked about? Drew, you want to go? Drew? Ahead? Yeah. Um, I know we already talked about it, but Grand Canyon, I know they lost by like 11 or 12, but that team was the best 12 seed in the tournament. Uh, best team past 10, I think, in, in the tournament. And uh, like they lost to a good team, but uh, they were winning with like two minutes left, and then Alabama just went on a late run. And they got him. But I, I thought Drew, Grand Canyon was a great team. No, are you not going to hype yourself up? You called the upset, though, round one. Last episode, we said what team would have the best chance of upsetting them. Some of our fans were tweeting at us saying that you called it. They followed your bet. So, hey, get round of applause for Drew for actually let's calling go, that. Dude, Drew. let's we, go, dude. We had, some, uh, <laughs> we had some good calls with that. Um, I think one of yours hit. I hit with the Oregon one as well. Um, so I think our kind of little upset first round tips and advice right there kind of did pretty well. Yeah, Wish we could have called Oakland, but uh, just <laughs> didn't see it coming. Buddy was just literally looked like Jimmer Fredette out there. Yeah. Going back to that Grand Canyon game, did you guys watch that live? I was in and out of it. I, I was watching it live. I was driving home. 
uh, from Virginia Beach or wherever I was. And I was in the car. It was like YouTube TV had the volume, so I was just listening. And there was this girl for Grand Canyon just screaming, like behind the announcer. So every play, everything was just a giant scream in my ear. And I was just like, what is this? Mm. And finally, Alabama won that 17-3 run. I was like, thank God. She shut up. <laughs> I tell you, one thing I was really disappointed in, though, uh, my – I'm an alumni of the Nevada Wolfpack, and they probably had one of the biggest collapses in tournament history. It was something – they were up by, like, 20 with, like, eight minutes left. And they, they blew it and, and took the L. Yeah, that happens. Oh, yeah, that hurts. But yeah. what I'm excited about is North Carolina basketball in general. Yeah, they're up. I know we don't like – I don't like the other schools, but it's it's good for the state, and it's good, good basketball. State's playing great basketball. Duke, I think, is the most suspect one of the three. Yeah. And then Carolina, that they Michigan State game, they ha- I had Carolina, I think, minus two and a half, three and a half, whatever it was. And they started off slow. But they got it together in that second half. They just absolutely dominated um, Michigan State. And it was a great game. I-, I think Carolina might be a big dark horse. I know they're not dark horse. I had them in the top four to win it. But I think they're a legit team, especially coming they're back. They're one the seed. No, I meant like a dark horse because everyone out of the UConn, one, yeah, Purdue, yeah, out of the out of the one seeds, I think they're the true like one that might be the best one, low key, and the worst of the one best. Huh? True boys, we already talked about a little bit about North Carolina, but what the heck's happened to ECU basketball? What do we do? I mean, obviously RJ RJ Felton's staying, but literally everyone else is in the portal. Like, yeah, today. What are y'all's uh, thoughts on that? Like, what should we do today? We had Pettiford going the portal. I'm pretty sure, right? With one yep, year, yeah. Brandon Johnson's out. Uh, there's a few others, dude, but. So it's going to be another year of either young guys or transfers. It's like, what do you do? I think, personally, look, I love – I think Schwartz had the right mindset coming in. He came from a big-time program. But you got to go offensively at a school like ECU. you got to be able to shoot the three, and we cannot shoot the three at all. Dude, we had talent, too. Like, Ezra is as talented as anyone. R.J. Felton is, too, and we just didn't play well. So um, I'm anxious, to, I guess, to see what we do in the offseason with – off-season additions, but I even liked coming into this year. I mean, I told y'all, like, I like the team. I thought we had talent, but if you can't shoot the three, look, the teams that make runs in this tournament are teams that can shoot the three, and 100%. ECU hasn't been able to shoot the three in 20 years. I think an interesting perspective, too, and what makes the situation so hard is that East Carolina is a baseball and football-centered um, athletic school. And so in this world of NIL where where you need to go out and get players like the ones you were just talking about, it's hard to do because a lot of our NIL funds coming in, I'm sure are going to baseball and football. And Dude, so they need to I'm get be- that attention and that that kind of um that love, I guess, from like the NIL community to become a serious contender. But it's hard to do that when no one's going to the games and stuff like that, in my opinion. Ja- Jackery, I'm gonna be honest with you. The boys were getting paid. I know I three of them were getting paid pretty well as much or if not more than any football player this past season well how, what's the ballpark we're talking we get... I mean, i'm not going to throw around their personal business because i know it well but, you're not uh, saying the people we're just saying ballpark i mean obviously if i say the three you're gonna think the three best players i mean they were getting paid well way more than i made in nil in the one year i was there there you go it's a ballpark <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing about basketball though there's 15 players on the team so comparatively yeah, a basketball school is going to pay those 15 players better. Like basketball money is just better than football money at the end of the day. So like a thousand dollars to a football player is really like $3,000 to a basketball player, probably more. Very true, but no way. I think you pay, I mean, let's be honest. We got the, we got the four scrum buckets out of the 15 that come in at the end of the game. There might be easy. You play like seven guys this year and, if you're not starting at ECU for basketball, you probably don't deserve NIL. That was really rude by me to say, but let's be honest, boys. I'm trying to we're the people show. We got to be honest. So, um, I I I just think we go pay some church ball guys that can shoot the three. Get bring them in here. I don't care if they're undersized or whatever. We got to get Cream someone to shoot the three. Jabbar. Go find the best D two three point shooters and bring them. Dude, in. Dude, that's what something Oakland, Oakland got. What's his name? Yoki Jokey, whatever his name. Jokey. Yeah, that, Jokey. He was, I thought you were talking about he, Yeah, whatever his name. He was a. D2 player for what four or five years and they got him so I don't know I, I agree you got to shoot the three you can't turn the ball over and you got to get some boards and did y'all see uh Golke's season stats he had seven two pointers all year but he was just catch and shoot the entire year yeah they, he doesn't do layup lines he just pops through <laughs> that. but that that's impressive you he, he learned his goal like hey I've, I want to be 
this type of player. I don't. He was. How many coaches let a player do that though? Yeah, I don't know. Like, oh, when we just be this type of player. Well, yeah, props to their coach. I've got a kind of a proposition idea here, uh, kind of college basketball, but working back into March Madness. Or if you guys are down for a little adventure right here, all right, well, let's get it. Uh, so, Sweet Sixteen coming out um, starting today when the podcast releases, and so sixteen teams left. There's four of us. Mm-hmm. I say we do a snake draft and pick the sixteen teams. So we'll each have four teams on our team, and we can figure out the winner, who goes the furthest, or the most teams that go the furthest wins it all. Let's like how about I like that idea. Let's kind of like who gets the most wins, and then what team goes the furthest, and add it up off that. Okay, how are we doing, the how winner are we draft order here. All right. Um. Let's Drew, go, Drew. Formulate a uh, ask Siri at the end of this a random number or Google it. A random number, one through twenty, and we all pick one. Uh, I was just gonna do by what I got written down. Jack, Kevin, all right, Drew, Holt. Drew, <laughs> hey Drew, is oh right. screw you, Drew. All right, y'all go, Jack. All you're right. first. Hey, you got five seconds. Go now. First pick, I'm going UConn. Think they look great. Okay, you, you picked UConn. Yeah, I'm gonna go with our boys up in uh, Carolina. I'm gonna go with Carolina. All right, I'm gonna go with. Arizona, Houston, Jack, your turn. No, it's Snake. So you now you're up first. Yeah, oh, it's now my turn. Yeah. So yep. now I know what Houston wants. Let's go. I'm gonna go. Let's see. I think Arizona was a good one. I'm gonna go Tennessee. Delay a game, boy. Where'd you just go? He Tennessee. Went Tennessee. Tennessee. All, All right, right. I'm a... going Purdue. Uh, ah, three. That gave me my favorite school on this. So oh, I hit know. the wrong button. Iowa State. <laughs> mm. Jack, you're going to have back-to-back here. So yeah. Who, can you give me my list of remainings? All right. You got UNC, Bama. No. Kane, uh, oh, Kane yeah. UNC. Bama, <laughs> San Diego State, Clemson, Illinois, NC State, Marquette, Zags, Duke, Creighton. All right. I'll take, um, I'll take Illinois, and I will take... Give me the Blue Devils. Okay. Oh. Caden, you're up. Um, who's left? All right, you got Bama, San Diego State, Clemson, um, NC State, Zags, Creighton. That's a really tough one. I think Creighton's my best chance of moving on to the next round. All right. I'm up. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Marquette. I didn't even hear Marquette. <laughs> yeah, that Marquette's there. still available. I didn't realize oh, that yeah. either. I'll take NC State. Let's just go. Uh, let's cheer for them. I, I like the Cinderella back, run. Ah, oh, freak. Who's left? I'll go Clemson and NC State. So uh, I don't like my four teams, but we'll roll <laughs> with it, boys. All right. I'm gonna take Bama. What's left? All right, we got San Diego State. <laughs> <laughs> we got San Diego State, Clemson, and Gonzaga. No, there should only be one. Holton just took Clemson. You're a bad bookkeeper, Drew. Yeah, these are all losers left. Oh, yeah, like, he did take Clemson. These yeah. really are all. I don't know. Doing Purdue's a lot of a writing over sketch. here. Doing a lot of so writing if, over here. So if I, Purdue is sketch, but I have him as my champion, but I guess I'll take Gonzaga because I feel like they really do have a shot. All right, and then my fourth team is the Aztecs, Mountain West. That's tough. You got a winner and a loser. What? Name off who everyone has now. Yeah. All right, Jack's team consists of UConn, Illinois, Duke, San Diego State. Caden's team, UNC, Iowa State, Creighton, Gonzaga. Mm. Drew's team, Arizona, Purdue, Marquette, Bama. Holton's team, Houston, Tennessee, NC State, Clemson. I think Drew and Caden are preseason favorites here. Hol- Hol- I think we'll see. We shall see. I think that middle spot leads to good voting. Let's just hope UConn. They've been looking yeah, we'll do the. Uh, We'll do the winner gets a pack of Anson Belts. Let's get to the next thing. That was brought to you by Anson Belts. The show is brought to you by Anson Belts. Appreciate them for supporting us. Go to AnsonBelt.com to see over 10,000 combinations of micro-adjustable holeless belts. Fits any time of the season. The boys are getting skinny. It's time for summertime. We say it every say it every episode, boys. So uh, shout out to Anson Belts. And stick on the basketball side, boys. NBA, there's like 11 games left. Legit contenders. Let's go around the room, see what we're feeling. You guys know I'm a rock with the Knicks, but uh, any other legit contenders? Let's start with the East first. Any teams in the East that y'all feel other than the Knicks um, can win it? 
Yeah, I think we. What was it? It's obvious. The, the favorites of the whole year, the Boston Celtics. Yeah, that's. I don't even watch NBA like that. It's the one sport I just can't really get into. Which I know everyone in here likes the NBA, but me. But the Celtics are gonna go to the championship. I agree. All right. Well, I have I have another team that if Joel Embiid comes back this season, I think the Sixers can cause issues because they've been playing without him for about half the year and they're still about a fifth seed. So if Joel Embiid comes back to that team, I think they could maybe possibly get out the East, but it, the East is tough with Where, a few teams. You're going to say they, the Bucks? The Sixers? Oh, the Bucks? no no chance. They can't win in you're the clutch. You're tripping. They can't you're win tripping. in the clutch. Drew, what's the odds Damian he comes Lillard. back? Uh, the odds that he comes back? Probably like I don't know, but you, 50. odds of trusting him when he gets back either. You cannot trust your own beat at all, dude. He, he should win MVP every year, but just doesn't because he's not available. But for real, I understand what Drew's saying about the Sixers, but bro, like, the Knicks are legit getting healthy. Mitchell Robinson is coming back soon. OG Ananobi and then Randall's going to be back for the playoffs. I think if it's not this, the only team that the Celtics are going to lose to in the playoffs is going to be the Knicks. If they if they make it through the East, they're going to win it all. I'm so surprised that however many weeks in we are, and you're still just on a Knicks high. Like please, this. Drew. Please watch games, bro. I'm telling you, they are actually good. Like I'm not just saying as a fa- Drew watches them and is a I don't know if he's a fan or not, but. He's not. Drew, Drew Finn give, for me. All right. Drew, I give you a thousand bucks to put on the Celtics or the Knicks. Where are you doing with it? Oh, I mean, I can't go against the Celtics, but I do think the Knicks are built to beat them because you can beat the Celtics with depth. You really can. Thank you. How, how does the Celtics beat the Knicks? How do the Celtics beat the Knicks? Yeah, I like to hear both perspectives. Uh, front run, get up early, third quarter, and then just hold on in, in the fourth. That's how the Celtics win games right now. That's literally they don't have close games. They blow everyone out because they get up early and then have so much depth that their bench takes over. That's so the, a, the Knicks are the one team that are deep enough to beat to match their bench, if not be better than their bench. It's a war of attrition against the Knicks or the Celtics. Yeah, I think they're the two I, I deepest those teams are the in the two, league. Yeah, I think those are the East teams, man. I really What's do. Up? What do you got out west? Denver. And that's it. I don't think there's anyone that can beat with Denver. You can say the Clippers can. The Clippers, bro, they're just as trustworthy as Embiid. Like, you're going to trust Harden. Obviously, if Kawhi comes and plays like playoff Kawhi he has like twice in his career, then they are. You just don't know if Harden, they are. Or not. I can't That's what I'm Harden. saying. I, I just I don't know other than Denver. I, people would say the Thunder, maybe. I don't trust the Thunder. They're still they're very young. young. Yeah. Their, their average age is younger than the UNC start lineup, which is absurd. And they're contending for, obviously, a cha- NBA championship. So that's wild. Anyone else in the West? I think there's potential for the Mavericks to make a run. Oh, yeah. Uh, with I can Luka see that. And Kyrie. I don't think they could beat the Nuggets. I think Joker's just too big of a threat down there. But I could see them stirring up the pot a little bit in the playoffs. See, my thing with that, though, is like they just don't have depth. And I'm telling you, dude, the, the Nuggets are probably the third deepest team in the NBA. All right. I got a team that I, I know Jack's going to be like, oh, this dude. But the Los Angeles Lakers, they, <laughs> oh they, are, one of the, they are one of the deepest teams in, in the league. They've been without Gabe Vincent. They've been without Jared Vanderbilt. And they just beat the Milwaukee Bucks at Milwaukee without LeBron. I, I a, understand that is a that. deep team, and like they're on a, they're getting hot at the perfect time. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the best three point shooting that I've seen from the Lakers with LeBron, and uh, like this is a deep team. And I know they got swept by the Nuggets last year, but I just don't know if you can consistently shoot as well as the Nuggets did against the Lakers. For just so players. our our fans are or our listeners are aware, Drew is the biggest. Vine swinger like Tarzan <laughs> of LeBron James, probably east of the Mississippi. Vine swinger. That's a good oh, my goodness. <laughs> I will tell you, honestly, Drew, I, I do think that they could make it just because they have LeBron and AD and anytime you have stars like that. But man said they had depth. He said Jared Vanderpump. Who even is that guy, Drew? I've Dude. never heard of that guy in my whole life. I'm with he, Drew. He's one of the top six six men in, in the league. And – if you watch the series against Golden State last year, he mm-hmm. followed Curry around like a dog. And you know, was playing you know Curry's the, 36 years old. You know and who, Curry runs like three miles a game. Guys, you know who the Lakers got swept by this season? The Nuggets. The Sacramento Kings. Oh, true, they true. can't even beat the Kings. And you think they're going to make a run in the playoffs? You're out of your mind. Oh, yeah. They got like to the avoid the Kings. 
they, they got to. I, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but they got to avoid the king somehow. Drew, Drew's right. He couldn't set it better. I couldn't set it better myself. I think playoff LeBron comes out. He makes a run. He's hint. He's getting older. This is this is the time. I, I like that pick, Drew. And the Lakers have one of the easiest remaining schedules in the league, and they're sitting in the ninth seed right now. There's possibility with the strength of schedule that the Mavericks, Suns, mm-hmm. and Kings have. There's a possibility they don't even play in the play-in, and then that would line them up to go against the Minnesota Timberwolves first round. And you're, you're trying to tell me that Rudy Gobert, well, a Rudy Gobertless Minnesota Timberwolves can beat LeBron in a four in a seven game series? No. Cat Edwards, it's his time passing of the torch. Oh. Or Aunt Edwards, I said Cat. <laughs> um, hey, that was brought to you by Worth Chiropractic. Two convenient locations on Arlington Boulevard called 1 800 Back Doc. They've kept me on the field. Boys, as soon as I get back to Greenville, I've said it last episode, I'm saying it again. Getting that back pop by the Back Doc, 1 800 Back Doc. Two convenient location on Arlington Boulevard. Go go check them out. We appreciate them for the support. Boys, we talked basketball. We're talking a little football here in a few. MLB starts this weekend. Let's go. Let's we go. Uh, So we've talked a little bit on the show. I'm, I'm a Cubs fan, um, and I'm not as big as a Cubs fan as I am like Knicks fan, but I am a Cubs fan. I'm going to get into it this year with sports betting, obviously legal. Um, we're going to go through, I know Jack, you already like the giants. We're going to, we're each going to pick a team and we're going to like master this team. So we're going to figure out all their tendencies and stuff. And that's who we're going to bet on. The four of us combined are going to be posting it on X throughout the year. Cause look, four is better than one. Let's, uh, let's get all the info, focus on this one team, understand their hitters, understand their pitchers. So I got the Cubs. Jack's got the giants. Caden, who are you following this year? Uh, you can't change it. So this is it. Yeah. I would do the Dodgers, but so bandwagon this season. We all know they're going to win the whole thing. Truly, I am a Dodgers fan, but I'm going to not do the Dodgers because they're going to go on a record setting Shohei year. is going to be suspended. Nah, he, he'll, he'll. Which we will get to. All goats make it out. Tom Brady made it out. LeBron made it out. Everyone's all right, what team? <laughs> I, like, I like watching the uh, the Rangers. I like watching the Rangers, so I'm going to go Rangers. Another Let's go. Move cause they Come just visit. The World Series last year. Classic. That's cr- you want me to switch again? No, you no, I, I'll, playing, I'll switch if you playing, want me I'm to. Playing, no, I'm just- <laughs> Kame was like, "Look, I'm not going to be a bandwagon and pick the Dodgers. I'm actually going to pick the, t- the defending champion All instead right, of the what, Dodgers." This is what this I'll year. do. I, I don't want any flack. I'll pick someone super random. I'm go with the Guardians. Okay. They got All right, Gavin pitching. Williams. Gavin, yeah. yeah, they do. So I'll go with the Guardians. Last last year, or two years ago, they were one of the the lowest ranking strikeout teams or they were the highest ranking strikeout teams i'm going back and forth on my notes on me right now but uh i did follow them a couple a, two or year two or three years ago i've always been into mlb sports betting it's one of my favorite things to do outside of college football college basketball this past season actually might be my second but mlb is something i really focus on what sucks i hate about mlb is i don't like to bet mlb until after like three or four weeks, a whole month in the first month is all throwing cards at a table yeah. so the, after that, I think the rest of the year is fun, but you have to get through that first month because you really don't know what teams are, how they're going to start out. You don't know how pitchers are going to start out or who's really going to be hot and yeah, batters going to be hot. I'd encourage our listeners, too, to go back and listen to our episode with Ariel and kind of listen to what she was saying about finding your groove, looking at different categories in the MLB market and stuff like that and, and finding what you're good at. So That's why... That's why we're going to pick one team, dude, because I even noticed with the Knicks, like betting with the Knicks is so much easier than any other team because I know their tendencies. I know how each player plays. Like it's, I think that's the way to go with stuff like this, and that's why we're going to do it is just focusing on that, learning what pitchers, what batters strike out more, what do they face righty or lefties better. Like It's hard to do it for 32 teams, but if you do it for one team and focus on it and there's four of us, I think there's some to it. Drew, who do you got? All right, I've never been much of a baseball guru, but I'm going to learn. I'm going to get in the lab with Ariel, and I'm going to go with the Braves. I hear you. I'm going to follow the Braves. Braves. Fans will like that. The Braves are huge Are huge in, uh, in Greenville. Boys, I said I was a Cubs fan, and Caden, you should have kept with the Rangers. Opening day is tomorrow night. Me and uh, me and G are thinking about going to it because I'm literally – dude, I wish I could show you right now. I'm in my room right now. I, my backyard is literally the – AT&T Stadium, which is right awesome. beside the Rangers Stadium, which is right beside ours. So might be going, but they play the Cubs. And then game three of the series is on on Saturday. We play at 12 o'clock this time, 1 o'clock back home. And then they play at like 6 o'clock at night. So me and G might be going to that one too. So I'll nice. keep you updated. I don't know how big of a fan I am of opening day being 
right with the Sweet 16 and the Elite it's Eight. It's a hard market. And the UFL, brother. Come on. I know. Yeah, and the, yeah I don't think <laughs> anyone's. You don't think what? Hey, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, what a, like, shitty schedule. Like, why did they do that? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's just that's always when baseball starts. Like, I love, yeah, March Madness kind of fluctuates sometimes. But, like, I'm not focused on baseball. I Like, we'll have to get back into baseball. But, like, I've been riding high on right now it's basketball. March Madness, and it's like, for sure. Usually I'm pumped for opening day. opening day, but this year it's like no, I set my cards out for baseball a few weeks out. It's like I gotta finish the college basketball season. Yeah, first. next week I head out to Denver for a job interview. Um, Let's go! And I'm going to the Rockies home opener uh, versus the Rays. That Let's weekend. go! So go check out Coors Field in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, Coors Catch ball game. Coors Field that would be a, honestly the Rockies would be a fun team to follow. The Rockies always. Home run blasting over. Caden, what hammering. was that uh, freshman year? What was that dude who played for the Rockies that would like hit for the cycle every night? I don't know what uh, we were on. I can't remember what we were doing. We were doing like fantasy baseball or something. We'd, we'd watch him like 12 o'clock at night. You know what I'm talking about? The dude with a long beard. Oh, Charlie, oh, Charlie Blackman. Yeah, Charlie Blackman. Dude, yeah. He, yeah. Is he, he still on the team? Yeah, but I, he's old now. He's aged quick. Like, uh, baseball, you age that fast. You're not doing those crazy things yeah. anymore. But he, Charlie Blackman was fun to watch for a while. Baseball news, boys. Shohei, we talked about it a little bit. Do we believe him? Do we believe that he wasn't involved, that his interpreter was just the devil, or was he in on this thing? He was sports betting his butt off. Look, as a Dodgers fan, I, I, I trust him. You know, I think <laughs> I think you got two people too close in your life, and they take advantage of you. That's true. And uh, yeah, to his bank account, dude? Like, yeah, that's, listen, different. that's different. It says that's translator. Different. Yeah. Just, why would you give your translator access to your no, bank account? No, we're, we're definitely, like, we got to protect our people. Like, he was taken advantage of. He's a complete victim. As Caden, not a Dodgers fan, hell, he was gambling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I liked that. That was good. All right. This I, is all I'm going to say. I'm going to put up this picture. Y'all trying to tell me this man ain't, ain't guilty? Look at that face. <laughs> to all the viewers watching, that is the face of a guilty man <laughs> right over here. Did you guys see the meme? It was like first press conference on Monday, and it was right after the, the round of 32 games. And someone like put his face on, and it was like by a mic. And it was like, Carolina minus three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, funny. so in the MLB, can you not? Was he betting on baseball games? Like, I thought you – like, in the NFL, you can bet on anything but football. Do we know? Do we know what he was betting on as it came out, or do we I not know I can't say I know 100%. I think – here's my opinion on it. I think he's good enough where who cares if he was betting as long as it wasn't their games. He's literally Babe Ruth of current days and just let the guy go out there and play. Just blame it on his interpreter, but he's already fired anyways. Let's show hey play ball. Yeah, he's not pitching this year though. He's only DHing or something. His arm. Yeah, let him go out there hit some nukes. Yeah, I mean Shohei is still a difference maker. He's, is he really not pitching this year? I don't. I think, I'm telling you, Tommy John. Uh, I've not kept up with anything. Like I told you guys, like I'm I'm a seasonal guy. Yeah, like, I take this. I take the season. To, I'll I'll catch up in a couple of weeks. So I want to make sure I get all the numbers. And it's still a month in. You're not getting much numbers, but. Um, yeah, that's news to me. I'm sorry, I'm way behind on that one. But still, he's still a difference maker at the bat. Absolutely. Like, oh my god, and he yeah, can fly. He hits nukes. He hits nukes. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm so pumped. Uh, if you guys, if you don't take Dodgers to win win it all, I think it's plus three hundred. Last I saw, you're just leaving money on the table. Yeah, well, they're gonna have to get by the Giants, who just that's tough, man. Cy Young finalist in Blake Snell, and now our Blake Snell is starting to look good. Blake Snell is the funnest pitcher I love to bet against. <laughs> Blake smell, Blake smell. Yeah, he smells like butt when he plays. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget my one of my first times ever betting was against Blake Snell. But I'm about to call him Blake Smell. Was against Blake Snell when he was in Tampa still, I think, mm -hmm. and just got ripped by the Yankees. Just the Yankees ran through him, and I was like, ever since then, I'll never forget. And then last year he started the year off slow. I think he started like zero and six as a just starter. Fade Blake Snell. Fade Blake Snell because. Well, Bet against it. I'm not to fade him. I'll bet the team against it. I'll go like his strikeouts. I'll I'll just do the opposite, whatever Blake Snell's bets are. Let's hope the tide turns this year. Um, I will say, though, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You're good. I would follow Ariel Epstein's on her baseball bets. That's, oh, where I, great. that's where I first found her. I know we've said this before, but, like, I told her the last two years, and – She's very profitable. That's all I'll say. She's very profitable. 
Um, you'll learn the game. Like she's focusing on the strikeouts, the K's. That's what I like to bet too. Uh, with pitchers, I love watching pitching. I could care less about bombs and nukes. I'd rather see strikeouts, and uh, she she crushes it. She really does. So check her out when it comes up. It should come out tomorrow. I yeah, guess. So yeah. I'm excited about it. That Let's a, go, boys. So baseball was always something that like spring comes and you're like, oh, it's baseball. Now we got the UFL. Uh, obviously, <laughs> it's more precedent with us working with Holton and stuff, so we hear more about it. Mm-hmm. Um, Holton, it's game week for you. Kind of give us a new update if anything's changed. Obviously, they made some more cuts, um, but tell us who you're playing, how it's going down. You're traveling for away games, stuff like that. Give our listeners kind of the inside scoop on that that they might not know otherwise. Yeah, boys, I'll tell you, the UFL, it is, uh, it's, it's some good competition. I'm not going to lie. It's, there's no more two leagues, the USFL and the XFL combined to make the UFL. There's only eight teams, so the competition is actually really good, um, at least from what I've seen so far. Um, the USFL champion, the Birmingham Stallions versus the XFL champion, the Arlington Renegades, which I'm a part of, this Saturday. Boys, it's going to be good. I think they're either starting Adrian Martinez or Matt Corral, which is obviously two names in the college football world. They got a ton of talent. They're really, really good. I think we got a ton of talent. Um, I am not starting right now, so I won't play unless something happens. I've been playing really well during practice, so when I get in. So we'll see how the season unfolds. Hopefully I get to get in. But we got some dogs on our team, some XCCU players, too, with me. Um, Obviously, Isaiah Winstead, Noah Henderson, Garrett got hurt. But check it out this Saturday. Uh, one o'clock on either Fox or ABC or ESPN. One of the, all of our games are on one of the three, so we got a big TV deal. It's good how? competition, Caden. I'm telling. I know you were. I know you were joking on it, but I'm but, telling you, if funny story, if you, funny story. I was in. I've been traveling the last two or three weeks, and I was in Boston, and I met this guy from Arlington. He said he said he lived in Arlington. I was like, oh great. I was like, heard it sick. I got a buddy. He's playing for the Renegades. And the guy looks at me and says. What? And I was like, really good. <laughs> and he was like, "What is that? Is that like soccer?" And I was like, "No, it's the UFL." And he's like, "UFL? Like, what's that?" I was like, "The Spring Football League." Dude was blanking. I like, did not know what the UFL was, and I was Screw just like, that guy. "I just walked away." But no, it, I, I believe you. I know it's good competition. I'm just waiting for no, you to get we'll, in there. Yeah, no, me too. I will tell you. I think this is the best chance the Spring League has to succeed because. The money's there. There's no more two leagues like it has been the last couple of years. Like it's just one league now. If people actually watch it, and it's the best TV deal that the spring leagues have. Um, if people actually watch it, I think the quality of football really will be uh, really good. I mean, at least from what I've seen so far. So we'll see. We'll see if it how, lasts. I mean, how many games do you have? How long is your season? It's ten week season plus two playoff games. So we'll see. We play St. Louis week two, which will be really cool in St. Louis. Uh, they pack out their stadium. There's like 60,000. So they got a good fan base. Um, we don't as much. I mean, our stadium's literally beside the Cowboys. It's hard to compete with those guys. <laughs> but I'm telling you, TV deals, man, um, and sports betting too. People, you can bet on it. I'm pretty sure it'll be on whatever. Um, obviously, we're not going to do that or me. I'm going to tell, make sure y'all don't do that either just because you're connected with me now on this show. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be on all that. So obviously, any sport, I mean, people bet on Korean baseball. They're going to be betting on spring football. Um, should be fun. Check it out, boys. It's Saturday. You, uh, you feel confident you guys get the dub? Are we feeling like we get a W this week? Or dude, I don't. We I get think a dub our, if you go in, <laughs> we shall see. Hopefully, that'd be pretty sick if I did go in. But dude, I don't. I don't know what to expect. Like this is my first year doing spring football. Like I don't know what other teams look like. I know they have a lot of talent on Birmingham. They've signed a lot of ex like NFL like studs. Um, I think we got a lot of guys that are deserve to be in the league and some guys in the back of their career that were. I mean, we have Vic Beasley at DN. Um, so I mean, we have dudes too. So it should be fun. Should be a really competitive game, I would think. But honestly, I couldn't tell. You. I mean, y'all know how week one is in football, bro. You never know until you go yeah. out there and play. What's a weird quirk? Any weird rules in this league that I wasn't aware of? Uh, two uh, forward passes. But <laughs> two forward, what? <laughs> it sounds crazy at first, but you know how you can like do a tip pass? It has to be, but the first one has to be behind the line of scrimmage. You can do like a tip pass and then throw it. It's actually a smart rule. There's no reason to worry about it if it's the first one's behind the line of scrimmage. I still don't understand that. Do you understand so, like, that? So like you can run like a jet no. sweep, and you know how you can do like a ta- a touch to the yeah. jet sweep, and it counts as a pass. That's a he pass, can yeah. sit there and throw it, mm-hmm. no matter what. Now. That's pretty cool. I actually like that. Um, and I'll tell you another one: no onside kicks. Y'all just saw the NFL took the XFL's kickoff rule, which is I like it a lot, but 
we're actually going back to the old kickoff. So if you want to see a normal kickoff, it's at the UFL now. We're going back to normal kickoff. But instead of you know, an onside kick, you get a fourth and 12. And if you get it, uh, you just get the ball and keep moving, which is pretty sick. Yeah. Um, like because that no one really sick. gets onside kicks anymore. So why not uh, spice it up? So you get a fourth and 12. And if you don't get it, then the team just gets the ball. I think you go for it on like the 35-yard line with the field to go. So like the team would get it where the onside kick would be normally. And then if you get it, you just keep moving down the field. Like it's a normal drive. So that's pretty sick. Fourth and 12. Like that's not hard. Like compared say, to onside kick. Fourth and 15. It no, was, was fourth and 15 fourth. last year. And then they moved it to fourth and 12. I'll tell you another rule too. Um, no PATs. You either go for one from the two yard line, two from the five or three from the 10. So that's another, you can have a nine point possession. Cause they want, they want it to be every. They want the fans to stay engaged. So if you're down nine points, you're still technically in one possession game. So they does, shouldn't make the kicker kick a fifty yarder for six. <laughs> <laughs> Holton, so does your team have a strategy where like different scenarios? Obviously, you're going for different points. I mean, I know if you're down, you're going to do that. But like first touchdown of the game on Saturday, is your coach going for one, two, or three? You think? I think we're mostly two unless you're down. I think that's kind of how the league works. Some teams go for one, but I think our coach was saying today that like the percentages from last year were like 40% for one and then like 44% for two. So the percentages are saying just go for two because it's pretty much yeah. close. Um, but I will tell you, like, there's teams that will go for three every time. There's teams that will go for one every time. So it's cool to like see the strategy within that. Um, like, are you going to try to take the guaranteed points from the two yard line, which is still tough? I mean, y'all know running one play from the two yard lines, that's tough, but it does make you practice more like those type of plays instead of sitting here having a third down period. We're having a extra, point you know, period. extra point period. Yeah. So it, it's pretty cool. You got to come up with some creative stuff. Um, that's kind of where you'll see the creative, you know, trick plays and all that come in, I would imagine. So we'll have to see. Real fast impact players for the Arlington Renegades this weekend. Who's it going to be? Isaiah Winstead, I mean, 100%. He's the guy that, uh, shoot, if I was playing, he'd get 15 touches. But him, uh, I'll tell you, our receivers, I've been really impressed with. I think they're all, like, NFL caliber receivers, like, on the edge, kind of. Um, so if if the league's receivers are as good as ours, then the league's going to be really good. But I think we have a bunch of guys. Um, don't I mean, I could sit here and name them all. I don't know who's going to step up. I know Zay will because I've played with him before, so we'll have to see. If I could, though. I'm not going to, just to let everyone know, not going to. Um, I would put, I'd bet money, Holton Aylor's league MVP. Dark Horse, they had some big plus money if they did that. Be, it's going to happen. Up there. It's, no, it's going to happen. we just wait. Dude, I, boys, I hope so. Hey, where we, uh, yeah, I mean, I got to get in first. We'll see how the season plays out, um, and we'll kind of go from there. I'll talk to you all off air about what the plan is, so we'll see if it comes to fruition. Hey, just want to say shout out to Wayne Hardy Law. Call 1-800-INJURED if you've been in a car accident. Um, they'll treat you like family. That's the Wayne Hardy difference. Uh, they will get you a rental and obviously deal with your court, win your case, get you some money. Hey, that's what it's all about when you go. Uh, when you sign with Wayne Hardy Law, they'll treat you like family. 1-800-INJURED. Jack, you want to talk about Madame Mesquite? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Madame Mesquite, our good friends over there. Goose Club, great clothing, accessories, everything you could ever imagine. We just sent out one of our giveaway winners there, packaged with Madame Mesquite. Can't wait for him to tweet it out and show you guys what he got. Um, we got more stuff coming in, and we can't wait to give it out to you guys. So shout out our good friends at Madame Mesquite Goose Club. Go check them out. Make some purchases and uh, rock their stuff. Yes, sir. Hey, boys. I've been excited about this one for a while. I'm leaning into the camera because I'm pumped. We've talked about it for a while now. We Hey, we, let, we knocked the rust off a little bit with betting, although we didn't. The boys are hot. We, we shall tell you, we're hot right now. We are officially announcing from Thursday until the winter happens. We will give an update every Thursday on X, maybe even on the show. We're going to have a little, like, uh, what I call it, like a little temperature gauge where it has a thing. We're going to do ten to $10,000 betting. Me there. versus Jack. Yeah, okay. Well, you got to restart, bud. I can't restart. <laughs> yeah, no, we're restarting. Starts this week, starts Thursday. So it'll be ten. You got to start with ten dollars. First one to get to ten thousand, we'll have to throw a party for you or something because that's very impressive. He's gonna um, we're gonna throw post a party for us. <laughs> yeah, you're throwing a party for the boys. Um, so hey, we feeling confident about it, boys? So like, look, if you miss a ten dollar bet, your first ten dollars, you're at the negative. So you're, 
you're gonna be at negative 80 to 10,000. You just got to work your way up. That's uh, it's the walk on lifestyle. You guys know it. How are we feeling? I think we all have taken free money already, so I think we're, yeah. we're in good shape. We just got to keep doing what I'm we're doing. I'm just going to have to figure out how to – I might have to do that in a whole different like sports book just so I can keep track of everything. We'll just take your money out and then do that uh, with us. That's the easiest right. way to do it. I, I don't know. I, I have a routine, but no, that's cool. I'll do it. I've, I've had right. a pretty good run right here. and I, I like seeing us our post on the DX, so if you were – ever curious of what we're playing or want to see the the wins and you don't believe it we post the receipts uh, i think we had a really good weekend this past week i know i did I, I know holton you had a couple of big ones in basketball but uh i'm excited for this weekend do we you know, anyone want to kick off the bets i we're not even i'm not even gonna really i don't have any right now i'm gonna wait and post them on x we okay. are gonna start posting them more and more hey we do post receipts though we're not lying about uh about our winnings, like some people, they, they say, yeah, well, we hit uh, we hit this and this and this for 10000 Boys, if we win, we're showing you, especially the big ones. Well, uh, go we're going to post it on our X. Yeah, Caden, if you have any uh, bets, so tell, we'll tell yeah. them and we'll tweet them tonight. So everyone's always like the sharp betters, the the public, blah, blah, blah. The public's kicking Vegas' ass this, this March Madness. I guess you can call me Vegas, but I really like – Two public plays this week, uh, Carolina, uh, Carolina minus two and a half or three and a half, wherever you get them on whatever book. Uh, what do they got? I'm blinking right now. Uh, they got, uh, why am I blinking? Alabama. Alabama struggled pretty hard with Grand Canyon. I think Grand Canyon is playing up. Um, Alabama has one of the best offenses in the entire nation. They're Off- streaky, though. They're very streaky. And I just, they're suspect. They, they play in the SEC. I didn't think the SEC was top three basketball conference this year by any means i did think the acc was pretty good so i think unc they're very strong on defense they don't have as strong as an offense but i really like the leadership with big hot and rj davis so i think those two it's their final run they're gonna they're taking it this year and they're my favorite one seed right now second is my second favorite team i could go back and forth with them iowa state Love Iowa State. Big 12 basketball might have been the toughest basketball conference I watched all year. And like our good friend Ariel Epstein says, focus on the areas you know. I know Big 12 basketball, and they're good. Iowa State's great. Their head coach is awesome to watch. Um, One of the best defenses in all of college basketball. They're playing Illinois. Illinois and Bama reminds me the same way. Two really high-strung offenses, really strong in the offensive efficiency, which is that's something I really do look at. But defense win championships and playing in the Big 12 versus the Big 10 this year, I think the Big 12 has the advantage. And they're just, they're a well oiled machine, the Iowa State Cyclones. And I really think they're going to win this one. The line's minus one and a half. I couldn't even believe it. Um, but I'm, I'm going to hammer it. It's going to be nice that everyone's coming off a little rest because you go to those uh, round of 32 and 64 rounds, and you know, it's back to back conference tournament right before. It's kind of grueling on your body. You're flying everywhere and stuff. Um, now they've had a day or two, a couple of days to kind of get settled in the new city and, and practice and get their bodies right. So this will be fun to watch for sure. Yeah, I'm excited. Any games, you, I know I, maybe I was the only one that has a play, but any one of those games, the games that we talked about, really? I'll be on UNC for sure, um, most definitely. I think I will also be on Tennessee. I don't know. That's just coming to my heart right now. Uh, but I'll post mine out there later. Yeah, we'll I'll post them. Later. I, uh, I'll tell you a good one that's been all March Madness is Baycott over in points and rebounds. So mm-hmm. we'll see if I end up taking that. I'll post that. We'll post that if we end up taking it, boys. Another good but, one. Uh, good call out. Another good one, DJ Burns. Yeah, he's points. been killing it Big too. Boy. Big boy, he can crush it, and he's so fun to watch. Back to what we said he's earlier. killing it. So fun. The light touch for a big man, you don't see it. You just don't see it. It gets me excited. I also like – I'm cheering for State. You guys can hate it. I'm cheering for them. I hate them. I want to see them repeat a 1982 run. No. We can all say it. I hate it. I don't want to ever cheer for State, but I like the underdog story they're doing. This would be way better than 1982 for them. This is, this we'll is, see. Th- I hate them. I'm excited for them. To me, Drew, it's going to be you- hard for State because um, I think the Sweet 16 is probably one of the hardest rounds to upset because – that's where you really get a game plan with your head coach. Like, you get about three, four days. So, like, you're getting a practice in. That's maybe not just a walkthrough. And then your coach is creating a real game plan because he's known his opponent for about four or five days. Mm-hmm. So, Very I, good I think point. that's the hardest upset. You're a good call, Drew. 
but I, I still point. think they have an, a lot of magic left in them. Boys, we we'll shall see. see. Drew, we wish you could do uh, ten to ten thousand with us, but we'll we'll get it started uh, on Thursday, and we'll see how the uh, the boys go. We'll update it, you know, once a month, or I mean, once a week. And hey, let's start posting our bets more on X, boys. I need Kate. I need to get you logged in. Um, but it's been fun. Hey, shout out to Southern Ease. Um, we appreciate you guys for being our title sponsor. You can see the logo down there, boys. I'm even wearing a hat. Uh, they, us, they got cool the discount code. Yeah, uh, discount code. I forgot to say, twenty five percent off. Um, pirate if you type in pirate you get 25 percent off your whole entire order check them out um they really are a great company obviously southern ease uh hemp edibles and go check them out yeah southernese.com so boys thank you for supporting we know we're appreciative shout out to the fans shout out to you guys and uh, hey we'll see you next episode